now. Welcome back to the opening bell. I'm back with former Governor Mike Huckabee and Todd Schoenberger. Joining us now in the conversation is Steve Forbes. He is Forbes Media Chairman and Editor-in-Chief. Lots to talk about this morning. In addition to immigration, we have big news from central banks in China and Europe. China cutting its interest rate for the first time, uh, main interest rate for the first time in two years. And the ECB uh, suggesting more uh, policy uh, uh, easing is on the way. Let's start with immigration. Steve, your thoughts. On immigration, it, it, what he did is a bad thing. There are very positive steps he can take on immigration, like guest worker programs, increasing H-1B visas for high-tech workers and the like. But he chose not to do something constructive. He did it for pure politics, show that he could do it, act like a, you know, King George III thought he lost the revolution in this country. Maybe not. It's a bad thing. It'll be fought. And I hope by spring or summer, when the president realizes this is not working, maybe he'll have a conversion. I doubt it, so but what one can always hope. What are the ramifications, then, over the near term? Uh, what it means near term, you're not going to get much done. Even these tax extenders that were supposed to get done by December 11th, how, what's going to happen with those? And so he's throwing it all on the table just for uh, trying to change the narrative after losing this election. I'll tell you, the tax extenders and the lack of passing the tax extenders is really something that business is talking about. We had Randall Stevenson on Friday on, uh, on the opening bell and uh, the CEO of AT&T. And he said the reason that you are seeing a real slowdown, a dry up of investment in this country by big companies, we've been waiting for CapEx to, go, to increase, IT spending to increase. It's not happening. Why? Because they were all looking forward to the tax extenders package and now they're doubting that that's actually going to happen. That's right and you actually saw that you you have been seeing that in the jobs market and then you start I mean we 200,000 jobs are fine but they're of the low income variety so when you start thinking about companies reinvesting back into their own companies or going out to hire you're not seeing those high wage earning earning jobs and if these if this is not extended obviously going into 2015 we'll just continue on with this part-time employment trend but nothing major. Governor. You know, I just think the president's made a big mistake by putting a focus on immigration. What he's really done in the name of bringing in some new voters, he's lost a lot of his Democrat base. The, the people who are union workers and uh, he's said Keystone isn't going to happen. Now he said we're going to bring in a bunch of cheap labor to compete against the American people who have jobs. A lot of those folks are Democrats. I think he's made a blunder. And in the meantime, what he should have been doing is focusing on the things that would build jobs, giving businesses predictability in the tax market. He's not done that. He's failed on all counts. Well, the amazing thing is there is a consensus now among Democrats and Republicans for reforming the corporate tax code. Everyone now knows we have the highest in the world. And if the Democrats felt that the president wasn't going to stab them in the back or cover, actually cover their back, if they make some of these hard decisions on getting this done, they would do it. You could get them in a few months a major rever uh, revision in the corporate tax code. The consensus is there, but he doesn't want to do it. So it's not going to happen. Well, this is probably one of the most important elements to the story of the immigration executive order last night and that is if we're not getting together on this and he's going straight through executive orders and not consulting Congress on anything why should anybody have any optimism that in fact we're going to get a major piece of legislation done like tax reform when there the devil is so in the details and there's a lot to negotiate well the hope is that on the immigration side that uh, they'll be chastened at least a lot of Democrats will be chastened by what happens in the next few months and maybe by springtime you'll have a different environment than you have today he's trying to repeal the election results it's not going to work and maybe by spring he'll realize he may have to actually get something done as president. John Boehner just Positive came out a, a minute ago, a couple minutes ago, and basically said that the president is acting like a king. What should the GOP's next move be, in your view? Uh, the several things. One is no more confirmations outside of a law enforcement, national security. No more judge confirmations when they take over in January. They want to play hardball. The Republicans can play hardball. They've got to find ways of power of the purse and then enact some positive programs like H-1B visas, guest worker programs. Say we're not anti-immigration. We just feel that reform should be done in a legal, constitutional way. Turn the tables on them. You agree? I, I agree with that. I think I would add to dealing with some of the specific problems of Obamacare. Don't put it all in one package. Put it one piece at a time. Lay it in front of the president. Let him defend taxes on medical devices. Let him Absolutely. defend some of the costly ways in which people's premiums are going up. Uh, make him pay the price yeah, for the damage he's done. Employer mandate, individual mandate. Let him veto those but, things. But what he did last night actually took the nation's attention away from those changes with Obamacare. I mean, Not they, when they get their premium that's increase. That's right. When they get that premium increase. 
increase, and it's going to hit them hard. They postponed it till after the election. Now it's come to right. Jesus' time, and, and Jesus is going to ask for some big bucks out of these folks. Well, they also Not delayed Jesus Keystone. I mean, <laughs> what about Keystone? Let's talk about the failure in the Senate on Keystone. Does that come up in January, and does he veto it? Uh, I think he will because he's got so much pressure from the environmental left. I mean, he, he took Mary Landrieu and he didn't throw her under the bus. Uh, you know, he, he didn't even wait for the bus. He just stepped on her himself. She has no pulse. She's gone. It, and it's frankly because her Democrat friends just let her twist in the wind. So what does what the early 2015 look like? Let, let, let's go around the horn here. I think the Republicans realize they've got to come across as positive, so I think they have a whole slew of legislation, things like medical tax device repeal and things like that. They'll pass one a week and they'll throw it on the president's desk. They're doing things, the president is blocking it. He'll be Mr. Negativity. That'll help change the environment on this whole immigration debate as well. He can't blame Congress anymore. They're going to give him bills. He's going to be able to look at him. Harry Reid has let everything sit in the Senate like the Roach Motel. Bills went in. They never came out. That no longer is the case. They'll go out of the Senate, land on his desk. He's going to have to act like a president, something he hadn't done in his entire tenure. Look at this. I'm just getting an email. The president is visiting India in January. He's going to meet with uh, Prime Minister Modi in January for a constitution ceremony uh, with, with Modi. Of course, we've got a lot of international stories today. Uh, what's funny? It's funny that he's going to go talk to somebody in India about the Constitution. I'd like for him to st speak to some civics teacher in a ninth grade high school class, because obviously he, he failed it. But he was a constitutional lawyer. He obviously failed his own course, for heaven's <laughs> sakes. I learned more from Tommy Powers' ninth grade civic class in Hope High School, Hope, Arkansas, than this guy got out of Harvard Law School. But he's going to India to, uh, <laughs> Good to meet Good for him. <laughs> Look, 2015, 2015. Okay, the conflict inside the Beltway is going to be wonderful for Wall Street. I mean, that's all I'm going to say. It's great for the economics. It's going to be great for stocks. We're going to hit higher highs. That's going to be wonderful. You guys keep doing all the fighting you want. We'll be fine down, and, downtown. And China cut interest rates today. Yep. That's one of the reasons the market is very strong yes, today. What does that mean for, for your world, for investing today? It's fantastic. Look, that and also you have Mario Draghi saying, look, the central bank's going to do whatever it takes. We love hearing that. Traders love hearing that. Whenever you get the central banks involved, that's it's always going to be a bullish positive for the market. I want to talk more about that with you, Todd, and how you're allocating capital. Governor, good to see you as thank always. You. And thank you so much, Steve Forbes, thank for you. joining us. Be sure to tune in to Fox News Channel this weekend for Forbes on Fox at 11 a.m. Eastern. And I'll be joining the governor this weekend on Huckabee, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Fox News Channel. Todd, we will talk more about investing coming up. Stay